to it. I forgot to get my notes out. And we're live. Welcome to paraglidingtalk.com. I'm your host, Robert Michaels. Glad you're here. Uh, we have an awesome show tonight. We got Logan Walters with us from the Red Bull X Alps. Oh, hey, man. Yeah. Also, um, we, we, I didn't, uh, I didn't talk about this before, but uh, he's X Alps pilot, uh, also a helicopter pilot and instructor, I believe, for helicopters and the founder of USA Hike and Fly. So we're going to have a great show tonight. Um, I do want to mention a couple of the sponsors before we get rolling. Uh, one of those sponsors is PPG Smoke. I did get an update just recently. There's a whole nother batch of headsets going out. Uh, we're looking at uh, seeing those in the next few weeks. Stay tuned. Check your emails. Those details are coming. Um, PPG Smoke has uh, just a whole bunch of really cool stuff for flying, whether it's free flying or paramotoring. He has the flotation systems. He also has the strobe systems. He's got lamels and chase cams and the Unity headset. And he's even coming out with an electric paramotor uh, at some point. And so ppgsmoke.com is the website. Go check that out. Get signed up. Um, also want to mention paramotorprops.com. Paramotorprops.com is the place that you're going to need to get new props from online. Um, I think I shared with you in the past, I blew up a prop. I was out in the middle of the desert. So bummed. My homies got to fly. I did not get to fly that day. So I sat there and I was on my phone. Luckily I had service. I ordered my prop. Literally in three days, I had a new prop. Paramotorprops.com is the website. Uh, Dreamlifterparamotors.com. This is a website that uh, is where you're going to get signed up for some incredible training for uh, maybe you want to do cross-country paramotor flying. So Harley Milne created this school. He's here in Southern California. And uh, this guy has some world records from flying coast to coast. He flew all 50 states. He's got some other stuff that he's dialing up. And um, he's offering training. So if you want to sign up, there's some links that you can follow in the description. And then there's also uh, uh, some, some ways you can get a hold of him through uh, Instagram, Facebook, those different things. Uh, if you want to get that kind of training, sign up with him uh, today. John Wayne donated $10 to the Super Chat. Thank you, John Wayne. I appreciate that. Um, do you want to mention if you want to keep the show going, you want to support the show on Patreon, you can do that. Go to the uh, link that's in the description to Patreon for the price of a cup of coffee. You can support the show and keep it going. Um, there's just a handful of people that have been carrying the weight of this show for a long time. I want to encourage you maybe take some weight off of those guys and uh, contribute a couple bucks a month. It's nothing. We go literally Starbucks and it's six bucks and you get one every day. Uh, this is going to support your flying it is going to give maybe somebody else some hope. Maybe you don't even watch these half of the guys don't even watch the show anymore. They still contribute. Uh, it's, it's good for the community. It's good for flying. And uh, that's what our goal is to support keeping sites open and uh, keeping the conversation going about paragliding. Keep it safe. Uh, there is one other, um, one other uh, sponsor that I, I want to mention. It is uh, Andrew Fuller. He has a full wing repair shop that uh, you can uh, get uh, connected with in case you accidentally tear up one of your gliders. Go check out that link uh, that is going to be in the chat and then also in the description, uh, Andrew Fuller's website. It's uh, kind of complicated, a bunch of hyphens and different other stuff. But anyways, go check that out if you have some, you need something done on your gliders. Also, he has a SIV clinic too, so that you want to sign up with him. Uh, go do that. Logan, I'm so stoked tonight. Uh, one of my favorite things in the world is when it's time for the Red Bull X Alps. Um, I love watching the uh, the intensity of it. It's not just like a five minute thing. It is days and days. It's grueling. It's taxing. Um, Logan is a Red Bull X Alps athlete. Now, not many people can say that they are this caliber an athlete. And I, I want to just preface because there's a lot of people that don't know what the Red Bull X house is. Um, this is a thousand kilometer flight across the Alps. It started 
uh, where they would fly from Salzburg to Monaco, thousand kilometers. And they have turn points along the way. You you go to the turn point, you land somewhere, you have to sign this board, and then you relaunch. And you either are running with, you know, maybe 15, 20 pounds on your back, or you're hiking up a hill to find a launch and or flying a thousand kilometers. So you and talk that's about 621 taxing. miles, by the way, yeah. In, yeah. in our terminology for, you know, people that don't know kilometers. I like yeah. miles. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Me too. It's just easy to say a thousand. So with, uh, with that, he's also a helicopter pilot, founder of the USA Hike and Fly. And so tonight, I'm really stoked to have you on the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, stoked to be here. This is exciting. I love talking about this stuff. Yeah, it was funny when I mentioned, when I me messaged you, I was like, hey, we have the show, Paragliding Talk. Would you be interested? In me? And you, I think your response was, I love to talk about paragliding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> Super cool. So um, yeah, I'm stoked. I, I want to just first talk about uh, how you got into paragliding, and then I want to talk about your experience with the Red Bull X Alps. Cool. Yeah. Um, aviation has like been my life for as long as I can remember. Um, when I was 16, I kind of started taking airplane lessons. I uh, got my license for an airplane at 17. A couple months later, the helicopter chased that. Um, ran out of money a bunch of times doing that. And, uh, and then I think it was 2011, I got my P2 and, um, within a month of flying, I ran into a palm tree up in Santa Barbara and I was hanging there, like just waiting for the fire department to, to save me. Like I was a cat. Um, no it way. was, yeah, that's, so that was my intro. It was great. Um, it's awesome. Yeah. 2011 was an exile tier and it was the first time I heard of it and it was like whoa this this thing sounds amazing but at the time i couldn't really afford to fix the glider i couldn't really afford to keep flying paragliders at that time and um i more or less walked away from the sport with the understanding that it's going to take a lot of time to be a safe and competent pilot and i didn't have it i didn't have the time or the resources to make it happen so wow. i came back yeah so that was a that was a six year break, I think. And, um, and then when I came back, I had the time, I knew what I was getting into and I dove in head first. It was, uh, yeah. Since then it's just been a whirlwind of paragliding every day I can. That is insane. Okay. That's, this is really, uh, this is really good stuff. So you end up having to like leave paraglide now were you still flying fixed wing stuff and yeah yeah mostly helicopters um i never got a commercial license in the airplane i i, I fly them when i have the opportunity but right. um yeah i was uh I, more or less jumping around um i moved to colorado because i was really into rock climbing and so i chased rock climbing for a few years and um I, I more or less moved back to California to work more with helicopters. And when I found myself there, it was perfect timing to go get paragliding again. So I, I flew the whole time. Yeah. So Eagle, uh, how did you end up with the guys at Eagle? Was this after time or were, is that where you got your training? So my initial P2 2011, I did it at Eagle. Okay. And, and Eagle kind of like they have this, kind of lifetime thing where if you learn with them and you can do training with them and you know they expect you to, to buy the crib and all that kind of stuff um so when i came back i more or less did like a refresher course uh as you like your p2 doesn't go bad right 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 so i kind of came back and did a refresher course uh got the wing got all the gear and then it was just just full throttle as much as i could um, who's your instructor my first instructor or really the first one, I have no idea. I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but in, I think it was 2017, um, is when I came back to it. And that was initially Dylan Benedetti. Um, okay. I haven't met him before. Yeah. So Dylan, he's an excellent pilot. He does SIVs. He pretty much, I learned with Dylan and then I went and took an SIV with Dylan right away. 
Nice. And it was awesome. I was pretty addicted. And uh, so I ended up working for Dylan at the SIV program. And that way I could just go and screw around over the lake as much as possible. Nice. And um, and then, you know, two months later or so, Mitch Riley came back from the X Alps. And then I, I more or less chased him around for the next year. Anywhere Wait. he was going, I'd go. Mitch was on the show too. So you're the fifth X Alps pilot that's been on the show. I'll okay. Take it. Yeah. yeah. So you uh you did get to fly with Mitch. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mitch, I I would say Mitch is a is a good friend. And um we flew a ton. He would take me to spots that were totally above my pay grade. And yeah, yeah. Uh, I bet. But then he'd have a retrieve driver, right? Right. So, right. Yeah, it worked out for him and I learned a lot. Yeah, sometimes he'll, well, he doesn't do it anymore, but sometimes he would post these desert pictures where it looks like you're in a, anywhere you land is like far from roads. It just looks like, oh. And it's so hot. It's, you yeah, know, yeah. you get those beautiful days in the Mojave, it means that it's over 100 on the ground. Yeah, so yep. Don't land. Yeah. Yeah, don't. I've done it. I've done it before. And uh, <laughs> me too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, that is so cool. Um, I love the fact that you're friends with Mitch. Um, do you feel like you had any influence on Mitch? This is a side question on his decision for his career. Oh, I wonder. I we we talk a lot about aviation and a lot about flying. Mitch is now and uh, he's flying airplanes for a living, right? And um, I don't know. I I. I can't say, but we definitely talked a lot about that kind of stuff. And I remember when he was making that decision uh, and we were flying a, a site, we were doing a clinic together. Um, we were both teaching in the clinic and that was at Pine Mountain in California. Okay. And he, um, we stayed up late one night and just talked about it for a long time. So I don't know if I was influenced, but I definitely thought it was a good idea. Yeah, that's awesome chase your dreams uh speaking of flying helicopters is that what you're still doing for a living um yeah yeah so that's why i i just moved to moab um and i did that for a helicopter job and um i have an awesome job we go play all the time i'm flying an amazing helicopter and i get flying? to put my paraglider in the back what's that what what are you flying what i'm flying a yeah it's an airbus h-130 so okay. it's a lot like an a-star just oh, okay. different. And yeah. so who are you flying for? I'm flying for a private client. So it's just oh. him and what he wants to do. So oh, awesome. Yeah, we end up all over the place. We land in canyons and on the top of mountains constantly. Nice. Um, we pretty much go to the airport for fuel and that's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. I, I have a good friend of mine. Uh, his name's Isaac Moreland. If, uh, he, I don't know. he flies helicopters for a living, but, uh, I, he's doing like tours and stuff, but he, he, he just recently switched. So I'm, I'm going to have, I'm going to have to ask him if, if he's, uh, if he's familiar with that helicopter. I'll, I'll send the link later on. Yeah. You can watch this video. He'll be, cool. uh, he'll be stoked. Uh, so let's talk about, describe your experience with flying the Red Bull X Alps. Um, I know it had to be, and, and you there's got to be some things that were just jaw dropping. Uh, talk a little bit about the the beginning, how you got the phone call, the invitation, and take us through kind of the process of getting into the air. Okay, yeah. Um, the so the X Alps has to be if you want to do it, it has to be a decision that you've made years before the application comes up, um, and you kind of need to steer your life this direction, right? Cause it's the flying, it's the fitness, it's the time commitment and it's a 12 day race and it's a thousand kilometers, but it's years and years of training, right? So it has to be like your focus in order to get there. And, um, and so I, I worked through and I, I more or less started doing uh, competitions in Europe to be, kind of with the same people that are that are racing and to get a wow. kind of associated with the terrain over there because it's it's not the same right so i did it i did a race over there i did a big bull biv over there um and then 
I just kept going with it. I did the X pier. Um, it's a race coming up this next year. Pyrenees. And yeah, and the Pyrenees, and it's a fantastic race, totally different than the X Alps, but you learn a lot there about the systems and the team and, you know, the teamwork is so important. You, you need a good team for the X pier or the X Alps for sure. Um, it's you, doing it alone would be so much harder. And so, yeah, I had a good team. Um, I put that application in and I had no idea who else had applied. I had no idea. I mean, I know that I'm in a pool of Americans. So the X Alps has historically allowed two or three Americans in. Right. So I knew Gavin wasn't doing it again. So okay. that's, you know, pretty good for me. Although it'd yeah. be great to to be out there with Gavin. Yeah. Um, so put the put it in the pool and you know, you get an email about a week before they announce normally, but this time they didn't even do that. They announced who's racing the day that everybody in the whole world found out. So it was that's uh, cool. It was a nail biter. Yeah, for sure. Wow. Yeah. So you get the email and then your heart just probably hit the floor. It was, it was definitely one of those moments where it's, you know, you read it and you just put it away for a second. You're like, ah, I don't think that was probably wrong. You yeah, know, yeah. I'm going to go for a, go for a quick hike, you know, yeah, something yeah. like that. Um, <laughs> and I just remember, I remember looking at it, reading it quickly and going outside. And I think I was, I think I was up in Bishop doing some flying and, um, yeah, I think I just went for a little hike and had dinner and then reopened the email, kind of smiling all evening. Yeah. You know, knowing. And then uh and then yeah, it really hit over that next week, I'd say, where it was like, this is real. It's time to to really double down on everything I've done and um and train. And it was time to train. Talk about that uh beginning where you're kind of taking photos and you're rubbing shoulders with, you know, Kriegel Maurer and Maxine yeah. Pinoy and some of these guys that you've been looking up to, obviously. Yeah, it's, it's, so I, I was lucky enough to do a couple other races with some of them and um, specifically became fairly close with Kriegel and Aaron um, Duragati. Wow. Yeah, and, Aaron Duragon. Yeah, enough to where, you know, I'd send him a message if I had a question or, um kind of hey what do you think about this section of the race because we have the course and we're thinking about it so when i first got to europe i i went to i was in switzerland and i hung out with kriegel for um i think we planned on lunch and it went, went for five hours of talking about hike and fly and um you know just having people like that really share what they have wow. you know, share their knowledge he's not you know he's not worried about anybody as a competitor yeah. he's yeah, going to yeah. share that info um, wow, and then I got the same treatment from Aaron, which was super helpful. And then we get to the actual pre-race week, which is like, it's it's signing the waivers, it's making sure your stickers are in the right spot, it's um you know getting your gear and taking photos and dialing in all your camper and everything that's going on there. So it's a it's a full intense week, and you know you're camping with all of these high profile. Hike and fly really is it's like the highest profile paragliders that there are. Um, and it's not saying that they're the best paragliders per se, right? There's a lot of people in, in PWC races or out there doing acro. Um, that's absolutely amazing. But it seems like it's the highest profile thing. It's probably because of the X Alps. So we do all that. We do the media, we do the photos, and you realize that you're just kind of this anticipation for the race and uh, the prologue is the first step. It's just building and building. And you can see everybody get more and more quiet, more and more reserved, more and more, you know, preparation for battle, the the war you're about to enter. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. I can imagine. Yeah. So you guys, you know, you're taking selfies with each other, you're hanging out and then all of a sudden it just turns to like, all right, now it's on. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that the day before the prologue, so the prologue is three days before the race. Right. So the prologue is just a one day. It was a, I think it was a 60 kilometer. I could be wrong about that, but 
it was a shorter race and um to me there was way more pressure in the prologue than in the race no kidding oh yeah yeah no I mean, cameras I it's the build-up and then it's you know you gotta you gotta do well in the prologue you can't if you bomb out in the prologue it could mean a huge penalty in the race um up to 24 hours so wow yeah so there's there's pressure pressure to do the prologue and do it well and um i you know the hike the hike for the prologue went well um up to the first launch and um i think i came in you know in top 10 or about there for the uh for that hike and then nice. the flying i i was flying well and um I just kind of stayed with uh, Pal Tackets at the time and just kind of yeah. stayed with him for a little bit. What and a then beast. he made a move. Yeah, he's he's a good, very good pilot. Incredible. Um, yeah. And on the ground, he did amazing too. It was he put on quite a show in the X Ops. That's for I sure. was I was sec secretly you know, I wanted you to win, obviously USA. But I was low key watching him thinking, man, I'd really like to see him beat Kriegel Mauer. Just saying. <laughs> I won. Yeah, I th I don't think I was alone either. No, was like, go 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 go. You just yeah, he was crushing it. Yeah, he was really willing. I think more so than almost anyone, he was willing to make a lot of this his of his own decisions. And yep. you know, as you know from paragliding, working together as a team is so beneficial. Yeah. And when the race gun started, Powell was racing. Yeah. You know, he took off. He flew alone to the first turn point, which. Nobody else did that. That was right. Cool. Yep. Yeah. He did that multiple times. That I think yeah. that's what bit him in the end, right? It's just one of those you yeah. could have went this way, you could have went that way. And the eagle smelled yeah. the blood in the water. He's so good. He's, <laughs> He's so, so good. good. Kriegel's Kriegel's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So um your what was your big takeaway? And I've got a couple of questions from the chat. I'm gonna uh, get to so just uh, hang tight with those questions those are great questions um what, what was your big takeaway from the uh x alps when you dusted your hands off what what anything that we can learn from your experience in that safety wise i would i would preface this by saying that the x alps is not a safe aspect of paragliding yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, yeah. it, it's just not, you end up flying in conditions that really, I'm not sure paragliders are made for. And yeah. I guess if it's a, if it's, you know, specifically to the safety topic, you cannot, and I cannot, I should say, I cannot fly how I did in the X Alps every day. I will get hurt if I do that. Right. And, you know, it's maybe that's just a reminder for everybody, what you see on, on the, on YouTube and that might be a one-time thing or that might be in the heat of the the race when you're in a completely different mental state right I, you're not thinking of of anything else you're not thinking of family you're not thinking of um of friends and or the recovery that could happen so you end up in this totally different mental state which takes some time to get into and then once the race is over it's kind of like all this dopamine release and you're I, to me, it was really just a big shock of that was the best adventure I've ever had, could ever dream of, most amazing thing. Uh, I, that's not that's not sustainable, right? Yeah. It's it's amazing, but yeah, it's on the edge. It's definitely on the edge. I've I've seen some playback videos of Kriegel landing in unusual places. Well, one year, remember. Uh, uh who was it so somebody landed in the river oh yeah oh but yeah it's just non-stop one after another uh you know you're you're looking at launches that you would never think okay this would be a good launch it's all rocks and you got one step and yeah uh not so uh le let me just get a couple questions uh one this is from david Sch Schmaz, uh, Schmaz is, I've met him a couple of times at the fly-ins. Um, he started doing some really good XC stuff. He said, what did Logan find most challenging during the X Alps? He said 
he never seemed to be beat down during his interviews like the others did. And will he participate again? His favorite location to fly. Those were so three questions there. So, um, okay. Um, yeah, I, I was never beat down mentally. And the reason for that was that I trained really hard. And to me, I, it was never, I, I trained so hard that when I went into the race, I made a decision that I'm going to go at my pace. I'm going to go as hard as I can, and I'm going to rely on the training I did. Because if I was to match myself with, with Maxime, you know, on that first night I'm running with Maxime, Maxime's more fit than I am. And he flies mm -hmm. better than I am. I, I think that's just kind of factual. Right. And wow. so to me, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm maintaining now, but I can't maintain this for 12 days and I need to go to my training and I need to rely on what I know my body can do, at least at this phase. There are other moments that I might need to turn the heat up. Right. And there were those times where it's like, I got to jam up this mountain as fast as I can. Um, Nissan in, in Switzerland is a massive climb. And I decided to do that on foot. And I, I was feeling really fresh. So I went for that move instead of flying up, which some others did. And I ended up at the top at the same exact time. Um, oh, where, wow. I, yeah. However, those two pilots both crashed into the mountain to land there. And one of them ended up with an airspace penalty. So I think I made the right move. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. But I don't remember that. That was, uh, there was a lot. <laughs> Something yeah, happened yeah. every day. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, I, I would say that, um, mentally I, I kept it just, it was all about attitude to me and, um, I was never, we made mistakes all the time. Uh, I made mistakes, my team made mistakes, but it was, we always said, okay, that was a mistake. Let's keep moving. Um, I think the most challenging part, just the conditions and, um, you know, on paper or looking from, from, uh, from home it looked like an amazing year. It looked like the best flying you could possibly have for the X Alps. And yet when you're in it and you're flying these lee side sites with strong North Fern, or at least some North Fern, it's nasty. It's really yeah. not very fun. It's kind of those, you can't even control, or I couldn't control where my wing was even going. I, I just tried to point it in a direction away from terrain and you're just going down um you know the wing feels, feels parachutal and you just have to just have to hold on and i'd say that was the most challenging was getting into those positions and i made the decision to land um really only once was i i had to be on the ground wow. the air was just too much for me at that state i was tired and fatigued and i would never probably fly i wouldn't want to fly that air any other time oh so nasty. that was definitely a challenge and you've put up with quite a lot i mean just flying with mitch just that yeah. alone right there you yeah. you know you've been through some stuff uh that's that's incredible um the other part of that question uh he said what was your favorite location to fly i and i, I was yeah, I mean, in the X Alps itself, I would say that um, there were certain flights that really stood out. I, I can't really comment on a specific location. I mean, it was I was blown away so many times. Um, I I had a flight from Nissan that same day, and um, that was probably one of the most spectacular. I just I think I took off at five or six p.m. and uh, flew sixty or somewhere between 60 and hundred kilometers at more or less as the sun was going down and the cliffs were golden and the clouds are beautiful. And the sun was shining off of uh, Lake Geneva and it was just, mm. yeah, I can't, can't forget that. That's gorgeous. One of the guys asked if you had a YouTube channel and he does. Um, I'll, I'll make sure we find that link. If one of the I moderators can chat. find it. Oh, you did. Thank you. You're already on top of it. Um, what let's talk a little bit. Uh, when we come back from this break, we'll talk a little bit about your ground support. Um, let's go ahead and spin the wheel. We're, we we do this every show we'll, where we uh, give something away. Tonight, we'll, we'll give away a paragliding talk 
shirt, t-shirt. And if, uh, if you already have a shirt, I've got some other stuff in case you're, uh, you've already won one and you want something else. I got some other. So cool no stuff. more names, no more yep, names no, in the wheel, no more names in the wheel. All right. Go ahead and let you it ready? rip right away, Sean. All right, buddy. Get this thing rolling here. So here the spin go. of the wheel is brought to you by calamity kite clinic. Calamity kite clinic.com is the website. Uh, this is Sean's, uh, training. So if, if you're going to be going to fly-ins and you're going to be involved participating in any kind of uh, flying um, fly-ins, uh, reach out to Sean. You can do it at calamitykiteclinic.com and get some training, some ground handling training. It will change all the dynamics for the better for you and you're flying, whether it's free flight or paramotoring, calamitykiteclinic.com. Also want to mention Josh Bowden. He has a school that he runs in Nebraska. So Nebraska PPG. Uh, it's a great place to learn. They've got uh, incredible background and he has literally surrounded himself with the best of the best. So you're going to get good training. You're going to get good gear selection. You're going to get all the things that you need to be a successful, happy pilot. Go check out uh, the link to his school and sign up today. Oh my gosh. My mom's just won. Congratulations. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, mom. I'm just going to send you a gift card. Thank you, mom. Congratulations, for Linda Anderson. Gosh. Oh, uh, she's won so many shirts. I've sent her like four shirts. You're not getting another one, mom. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about your ground team. Um, if I remember correctly, you had Revis. Yep. Uh, Revis is probably in my opinion he's the the beast of all weather predicting i don't know anybody that's better i mentioned pre-show that there's one guy that i think is on that same level really close uh talk a little bit about uh that relationship and uh also everybody else who was helping you on the ground so yeah revis was um he was kind of my listed main supporter um we ran a pretty tight crew. So some teams have up to eight, um, eight plus people. Really. I think we had, a, we saw a team of almost 12 people. Um, oh my gosh. Who had 12? Yeah. It's a lot. Um, wow. Yeah. So it just, and it, then at that point you really need to have a manager for the team, right? You need someone that's getting food for everybody. And so we, we ran a really close, um, it was Revis and Chris Lormer out of Santa Barbara. Um, they were my two main supporters and they were fantastic. So I, I more or less have hung out with Revis a bit. We'd flown in Santa Barbara. We've flown in the Mojave and in Bishop. And, um, he, he would guide down in Columbia with me. So we were doing, we hung out, right. We knew each other pretty well. We talked about weather a lot. I love weather. I love what he has to say about it. And so, um, when Gavin said that he wasn't going to do the race again, Revis was still interested in being a supporter and Revis came to me and said, Hey, if you ever do this race, I will do this with you. Wow. And yeah, I, I said, let me think about it. I think it took me, you know, less than four a seconds. week to call <laughs> yeah. him back and said, four seconds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Hey man, we got to do this thing. And, uh, yeah, yeah you're, you're my number one, especially um, cause he's done it already. Exactly. No, yeah. I mean, to, you know, the first time Revis was a supporter, he had never been to the Alps, right? So right. I grabbed Revis at this point where he'd done two X Alps already. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, which perfect timing. Really happy about that. And uh, he was great. And we we get along really well. We have, you know, great. He has great personality. He's super funny. Um, I, I get a kick out of Revis every time I hang out with him. So that was great flawless um i i i have pretty direct communication and revis takes that very well and he'll give it right back to me and i love that it's it's very simple um when it's time for business we talk business and when it's time nice. for fun we talk for fun you know yeah um he'd give me little reminders in the air right? i'd have some sort of event or i'd be scared um, something like that. And I, and I would tell him, you know, cause we have this really good communication. Hey man, I'm not sure what to do here. Or the wind is, is horrible in this section. Do you have any ideas for me? 
and he would come on uh on zello we we're using the zello for talking yep. he'd come on and be hey man stick with it you're doing great and if i was really you know really not feeling it he would always give me permission to land i i never did um but he'd always say you know if it's not worth it like there's a there's a good spot down here and he's already working on a plan b and a plan c and it's wow. it's invaluable how amazing Ravis is at that stuff as well as keeping an eye on all the other athletes he's always thinking about trails um if it's just a glide in the morning he's calculating my glide so which trail makes the most sense to get on to start hiking for the next launch so you know, I'll wake up in the morning and the first launch has been set kind of the night before we've decided. And then in the morning, he'll say, okay, this is what you're doing until 11. And then at 11, we should start trying for cross country. And this is the route, you know, and things change. They always change, but he's so good at, at updating and changing the plan with me. So that was awesome. And then yeah, Chris that's... Lormer, he, um, he, he did a lot. So the biggest thing about Chris is that he's hilarious and he can cook like nobody else. Nice. So we put him up in the RV and, you know, get whatever food he wanted. And it was amazing. Um, he's super fit. So he was able to hike with me a lot. I'd give him my jackets or water and he'd help me hike that up at least nice. once a day. Um, yeah. So him having a really fit supporter you, you kind of want at least one fit supporter that can also fly. So it's somebody else's opinion on the conditions, somebody else's opinion on, Hey, does this make sense? Should we keep hiking? Should we stop here and launch? Um, so we were able to discuss a lot of the kind of on the ground things while Revis was kind of doing the play by play at the computer. So yeah, that's having right. those two, it, yeah. And they work super well together. They're just in there. There's eating gummy bears all day long. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I slept, I think I was sleeping somewhere around five hours a night, I want to say. And they were regularly getting four to, you know, three and a half or four hours of sleep oh, and wow. up Gnarly. the whole time. Yeah. It's the, it's work to be a supporter. You have to enjoy oh, yeah. going into your own pain cave and, you know, getting all this stuff done. And it's, this is why I say it's just absolutely a team sport. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Will Fly donated $5 to the super chat. He said, resurgence PBG rocks, please donate. Thank you for that contribution. Will Fly. And uh, we, we absolutely love resurgence PBG. Re resurgence PBG is a 501c3. If you want to support our men and women of uniform, you can do that by making a tax deductible donation to them. They uh, take wounded warriors, wounded veterans, and they uh, give them a vision for paramotoring or um, getting them involved, just bringing them into the to the sport of paramotoring. And uh, they've, they've done great things for a lot of people. So if you can support them, uh, do that. I also want to really quickly uh, mention uh, Ron Turan. He has uh, a world-class training facility in Lone Star, paramotor.com. Lone Star, if you're in the state of Texas, you want to get that training, uh, go sign up with Lone Star. And... Uh, You'll not be disappointed. Uh, there was a question that came from uh, Paragliding Pixie. And uh, her question was, what was his most memorable flying moment from the X-Alps? There was a lot, that's for sure. Um, I think every day had a huge highlight and a low light. And um, I, I think that, you know, I... I had a, that really scary day was just north of the Aosta Valley in Italy. And the next morning I launched from almost the same spot that I had that just horrible air the night before. And, um, I was lucky enough to then tag the next turn point in the air. I kept flying. I flew all day. Um, I was able to make it all the way to Bellinzona, which was, you know, it's, I think it's a hundred and 160 kilometers about was the first flight. So wow. about hundred miles. And then the next flight after that, I had like a, a 40 kilometer or no, sorry, 20, 20 kilometer glide, I want to say. So just adding those two together that day, you know, we covered way over hundred miles and, um, saw tons of beautiful, beautiful stuff. So that was definitely a highlight flight. That's awesome. Um, there was a question, are you going to do the X Alps again? 
I, I get this question all the time and yeah. my Give answer until minute. yeah, just recently has been like, I don't know. I really don't. <laughs> and the reason I don't know is because it was so good. It yeah. was so amazing. Like you can't, I can't recreate that. So if I go into it again, I need to have a new game plan. I need to have mm. kind of a new idea of what this is going to look like. It's going to be a different year, different weather, different route and right. um, new gear, different things, you know, and I, you know, it just, so am I going to do it again? We'll see. I don't know. Probably. It's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. I was going to say <laughs> it's the answer is not no. It's not. No, <laughs> no, it's not. That's awesome. Uh, tell us about your gear and why did you choose that gear? I'm really fascinated with the, I got to fly Paul Guschelbauer's wing from whatever year it was. Uh, he came here to San Diego, get some flight training. He, he actually did some training locally here. And um, so I got to fly his wing and I, I was just so stoked to be able to say, I flew pa Paul Guschelbauer's wing that he flew in the X Alps. It was incredible. Awesome. Uh, the poison. So yep. um, talk about your gear why you chose it. And, and I'm interested to know a little bit about your instrument deck. I'm, I'm about to make a decision. My, my, uh, variometer is on its very last legs. It barely will charge anymore. I've been uh -oh. flying quite a bit with no vario just because I'm just flying locally. And, um, I fell in love with no vario, but there are times when you get higher, you can't tell anymore. So you have to have it. Yeah. Uh, to yeah. Maybe talk first with your instrument panel. What did you choose? Um, so for the instrument panel, I have mm -hmm. an XC Tracer Max 2. Um, okay. So that's the newer XC Tracer Max. And it it's a great instrument because it's standalone, right? I can use that if I don't have my phone. I can use that on any of my kits. Sometimes I'll just take it and throw it in a pocket. Um, then I can still hear it, at least, as an audio. The, the battery life's amazing. It's awesome. So... And then I pair that with my phone and I use a Google pixel phone so that I have, um, that way I can upload different maps and different layers into XC track. Um, so I'm running XC track that's got my course on it. Um, and then I've got a map on there that shows me hiking trails. It shows me Springs. So for water, um, and so having, having all that there is really beneficial. And that'll work even if I lose service. So I like having uh, having all those maps, right? All that info is great. In general, I like a lot of info. Uh, for hike and fly, that's the only thing I'm working with. When I do more long, like longer cross country, things like that, I have a fly master as well. Um, I got it to train for the X Alps. They used to require them, but I no longer, they don't use them anymore. So I'm not sure what I'll do with it. Oh, interesting. And yeah. Yeah. So this, this device is fantastic. Um, cheap. <laughs> no, not no, cheap. they're not. Yeah. Yep. And then the gear. So I've been working with, with Naviac for a little while and, um, the, the reality and reality, my opinion is that the gear you have for hike and fly is really going to depend on what you're doing with it, your level of piloting, right? All of that's going to add to the to the decision. The one thing that people I think get a little hung up on is the performance. How is the performance of the Zeo Light versus the Climber 3 versus the Omega, you know, it's people get really hung up on these really fine-tuned performance things and I get it, right? You want a better glide than your buddy. Um, or in that race, you want that little advantage. And I think that the reality for me is that that little advantage in performance isn't worth giving up for handling, especially, right? And that, that comes down to the fact that you're doing a lot of launches that are difficult, a lot of landings that are very Ooh. difficult. So good having really good handling is super important to me. And some of that's personal preference, right? right. I've been flying Niviac for, for a while now, and I find that it it lends to what I like. Is that because I've had them for a while? I don't know. I, I can't say. But I like that precise feel that I get from that wing. And did then they the other thing. Did they reach out to you? Sorry. Did they, yeah. Did they reach out to you once they knew you were 
in the X Alps. So you, no, you I, how did that go yeah. down? So uh, sponsorship in paragliding yeah. is very difficult. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure what it takes to to get that sponsorship. Yeah. Um, other than what I did was I reached out to them with photos and letters and talking to them. And um, it it helped that I had done some hike and fly races. It helped that I had started uh, USA Hike and Fly. Um, it really helped that I was an instructor and uh, guiding people. Right. Mm. I think as a guide, you have some influence. Yep. And so I think that's that's not a bad thing to have on the resume when looking yep. for sponsorship. Nice. Um, so after all that, you know, and then I, I, I really went after Nivea, to be honest, I, I wasn't right. emailing other, other companies. They were the only ones okay. I was talking to. And that's um, because you love that brand. I liked the gear. Yeah. 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 Specifically awesome. the, the climber, you know, to me, it was the climber two is what I started flying with them. Okay. And it, it stood out to me. Um, and yeah, so that went pretty well. I used the climber two in the X pier and okay it was epic i loved it um nice. so i've had two climber two i had a climber one two climber twos and now i have the climber three and um you know the the other thing that just to add into that conversation about wings is so much talk about performance but for hike and fly light light oh, weight, right especially in europe where yep. you're not going to probably damage it nearly as badly as in, in San Diego. Um, yeah, and blossom. Right? Yeah, or here in Moab, right? Yeah. In Moab, I, I don't I don't bring the climber three out too often here in Moab. Yeah. 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 Is it white? It's white. The three, yeah. For now. Yeah. 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 Except for one time. It'll be red. Yeah. It's in Utah. Yeah. Wow. Um so, so you chose that climber. I fly with a couple guys that that are flying a climber. So those are actually really good wings. I'm flying a uh, the um, Mantra Seven, and I, I really like that wing. I, I like the safety. I like everything that's built into there. Really nice. Yeah, uh, I had one of those actually. I've, I've I had oh, a Mantra nice. Seven. I flew it for about a hundred hours, and I loved it. Yeah, nice. Uh, talk about your biggest supporter. Who is your biggest supporter in all of this? uh my girlfriend for sure okay yeah all right did she go with you to uh, europe too nope she couldn't yeah. go i Brutal. i didn't invite her okay <laughs> so so go the so she is my biggest supporter for sure right yeah. she helps me constantly whether it's feeding me or going for a cool down walk or whatever it is she's an yeah. amazing athlete herself so okay. she she understands kind of my drive um and why I do this and you know having that and having that when I get home at night and having the ability to not talk about paragliding and talk about other things you know she really she she's the best I love her um That's and awesome. then she wasn't invited because I knew that the X Alps was going to be one of those things where you're putting it all on the line Yep. And, um, testing, you know, she's kind of my safe place, right? I don't, I don't want to bring her. And then uh, the dilemma is I'm doing this and it's, it's a little different, but, um, yeah, she's, she's my number one for sure. That's awesome. Um, uh, Jeremy asked, what are Logan's favorite in-flight snacks in personal now? Oh yeah. Anything but a sandwich. Yeah. yeah no sandwiches. I, I had a sandwich once and I and I held it in front of me and I went to go take a bite and I lost all the lettuce, the bread flew by. So <laughs> I like things that are like held together a little bit better. Um, That's funny. I, I eat a lot of, uh, during the race, especially I'd eat a lot of gummies. So uh, Scratch Labs makes really good kind of hydration gummies. Um, they're really salty and they're fantastic. So I would just eat a bunch of those. What are uh, they called? Meat, uh hide so they're made by scratch labs and they're scratch they're labs. like gummy i don't know how to say it yeah i know a guy that um, eats a lot of gummies never mind go on <laughs> this this guy you got uh, one common in the whole sticks, show yeah <laughs> halloween we had gummies all you know it was 
candy, chocolate, gummies, everything. Mm. This Go ahead. Guy. Candy. Right. I'm a I'm a fan. Yeah. So um and and these little gummies have like um some some extra like uh electrolytes some ele- or so yeah it's electrolytes oh, and then okay. sugar um you know sugar is great when you know you need that extra energy and the electrolytes oh, yeah. keeping you going and you know a, a big thing then I, I have i always have a water bottle that has uh magnesium potassium electrolyte kind of mix in it um i use lmnt a lot for that and that that's just kind of got your daily fix of all those nutrients in one drink super salty so it's good to drink it with a big bottle of water. Okay. Um, but I do that while I'm flying. I find that if I'm going to cramp up, it normally happens when I get cold and I'm flying, right? Oh. Straight legs, getting really cold. That's where I normally cramp. So I try to try to eat in the beginning of a flight to kind of prevent that kind of stuff. You, uh, when, when you're flying, are your legs locked when you're flying or do you slightly bend your knees just a a very slight bend yeah yeah unless you're really pushing the speed bar hard um then i then i tend to lock them but um i i most of the time i'm flying on that first step of speed bar and really yeah pretty pretty much all the time on the first unless you're thermaling right um but if i'm not thermaling i'm probably on the first step and, uh, and then if you need it, you know, I'll, I'll go to the full step, but on the first step, I'm also just slightly bent wow. and that's going to change with what, which wing you're on. Right. And your aspect right. ratio. Yeah. So the, the skinnier, the wing, the less pressure it takes, the more likely you're going to be doing that. Right. Oh, that's great stuff. Right. That's a little golden nugget for all the cross country people. Um, Seabass asked, what's your personal best cross country flight? Um, I don't know. That's a good one. I've had a lot of really memorable flights. I, I would say that, uh, there's, there's probably, I, when I got back into flying, my goal was to fly in the Owens Valley in, in 2017. Okay. I was like, Owens Valley. I was climbing there. I looked up, I saw paragliders. I'm like, I got to do that. And, um, and then in my, second going on third year of paragliding i was super fortunate i had a huge flight from nine mile out of uh kind of the southern just south of the owens valley and i flew all the way through the owens valley up the white mountains off into nevada late in the day and wow. um yeah that, that, that flight really sticks out revis flew that day as well okay yeah, yeah i remember watching that they, they they popped that up on the on the uh chat and they showed your your uh your send on uh oh, I think yeah. it was XE find and they showed that huge scent. Yeah, that's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, that one stands out. That's that was a good one. There's a lot. I mean, there's some some of my favorite flights are really low cloud base in Santa Barbara where it's hard to make it, you know, 30k and I it's just so fun. You're flying new terrain because you're never that yeah. low in this cloud. It's yeah, oh, yeah, it's hard to say. Yeah. That's awesome. Um then also um I think there was one more question in there that I didn't get to. Uh, what is your dream team to have when you do the X Alps next? That was from Seabass. I, I feel like I had my dream team. You know, yeah, if, yeah. if I could afford to, I would add in uh, a really good friend. He's amazing with logistics. He understands, you know, what I want to do and who I am, and he'd get along with the rest of the team. And that would be probably Chris Garcia. Okay, I've yeah. heard that name before. I don't. Someone I think recommended him for the show. Actually, yeah, he'd, be, he'd be good. He'd Is be he good. from Eagle? He, yeah, he works for Eagle sometimes. He uh, okay. he has his own company as well, Convergence Paragliding. Um, okay, interesting. Yeah, so he does tours Macedonia, Cuba. Um, and he's, he's been a great friend. I met him in Nepal and, uh, we've been super close for, for years. All right. I'm going to have to try to reach out to him. Second time he's been mentioned. I have to, I've got a weekly show. I gotta, gotta keep these slots full. Yeah. (laughs) So, uh, there's, there's two minutes left. I'm, I'm just incredibly stoked with how this show went and, uh, I told you that was going to fly by and it did. Um, yeah. 
Wow. Uh, we, we are going to, we're going to wrap up. If you guys are uh, wanting to see more of this kind of content, please support the show, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, uh, the whole thing. We're going to put a link for, uh, for Logan's YouTube channel. So support that, go and check out whatever he's got on there. He's got some cool stuff on there. Um, the, uh, he's a rock climber that saw some paragliders flying by and, uh, got hooked. Um, maybe you're going to get hooked on paragliding because of this episode or this show, uh, support the show, Patreon and PayPal. There's, uh, there's links in the description and, uh, you, you've got somebody behind you, but you're blurred out. I don't know if they're trying to troll you. Make sure. Yeah. That's scary. <laughs> yeah. My kids usually try to bust in and mess with me. <laughs> so, awesome. uh, thanks again so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. I would love to do another one. I'm super stoked for the X Alps. Hopeful that you will, um, that you will take, uh, another shot at it. This, I feel like the first year is like the trial. It's like the rookie year and I'm not trying to sway you in any direction. Uh, but I, I agree. No, I yeah. agree. Yeah. That I was, that was my thought process going in, man. Yep. So I, I, th I think it's, uh, it's something that, uh, many people would be interested to see, but, uh, that's just my take. Uh, we're going to go to the after show. If you want to come and hang out for just a second, I'm not going to hold Logan hostage. So he can, he might stay for a minute. He might stay for 10. Uh, but, uh, we're going to go to the after show. Thank you all for, uh, for watching. And thank you. If you're, if you're listening to this on the podcast, uh, there'll be more podcasts coming out soon. And, uh, again, thank you for all the moderation team, Anthony Peregringo, Scotty, Sean, thank you for what you guys bring to the to the table and all the moderators in the chat that uh, kept the show good. Thank you for watching. If I don't you. see you on the air, I'll see you in there.